we're going to have to rebuild within this wild, wild west of information flow some sort of curating function. It's time for the Access of Easy podcast, the weekly technology digest that keeps you ahead of the curve. We've got to maybe do something with the internet. Brought to you by EasyDNS.com. Somebody will say, oh, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. These are foolish people. Apple got a pass on pervasive Siri eavesdropping, according to a whistleblower. The FBI and runs Apple security by hiring outside vendor to crack an iPhone. Silicon Valley firms do business with blacklisted China firms. And oh no, not the Russians again. Study ascribes 50% of anti-lockdown tweets to bots. Hey everybody, Mark Jeftovic here with another edition of Access of Easy. This is episode number 147, and we're recording this on May 26, 2020. I'm doing this from my home office this time. I'm using a different headset, so sorry if the sound is a little different. I notice it's a bit more tinny. And what just happened? Did my thing just mute me? I don't think so. Anyhow... Let's do the quotes. Last week's quote was, The press is the hired agent of a moneyed system and set up for no other purpose than to tell lies where their interests are involved. That was by Henry B. Adams, and nobody got it. This week's quote is, If privacy is outlawed, only outlaws will have privacy. You know the rules, no searching this up online, and the first person to post the correct source of the quote to the show notes page gets their next Uh, domain or web hosting renewal on us and the show notes for this week's edition will be at accessofeasy.com slash 147 okay apple got a pass on pervasive siri eavesdropping program according to a whistleblower so back in access of easy 107 we covered how apple contractors were receiving recordings made by siri that routinely included sensitive conversations intimate details drug deals even sex one of those contractors has since turned whistleblower because apple has gotten off quite lightly for the privacy violations especially under european gdpr standards as the details of the program come out it looks like siri like pretty well all other personal assistant apps is always listening always recording and in this case even when siri was not enabled so when I look at my notes from Access of Easy 107, to make it a point for Siri not to do this, you have to go into your iOS device, like your iPhone, you have to go into Settings, Privacy, Analytics and Improvements, and then Turn Off Share iPhone Analytics. Okay, I'm not sure if this is on by default. It was off for me when I looked, but it might have been like that uh, since I wrote you know, 107. FBI and runs Apple security by hiring outside vendor to crack an iPhone. So Apple, they usually say they are staunchly and unwavering in their adherence to user privacy and that they won't assist law enforcement agencies in cracking into suspects iPhones. And though we reported back in Access of Easy 130, they did drop plans for encrypted backups after the FBI objected, and they did provide the iCloud backups to the FBI anyway. So while they say, we're not going to help you get into the phone, here's the iCloud backups of the phone. Anyhow, the FBI has been successful into cracking into suspect phones without Apple's help anyway by hiring an unnamed outside cybersecurity agency. And my bet is that that agency is the NSO group, who's featured here fairly frequently. Quote, after the government went to federal court to try to dragoon Apple into doing investigators' job for them, the dispute ended anticlimactically when the government got into the phone itself after purchasing an exploit from an outside vendor the government refused to identify. End quote. Here we go again. A study ascribes over 50% of anti-lockdown tweets to bots. A study from the Carnegie Mellon University ascribes over 50% of tweets calling for an end to the widespread coronavirus lockdowns to be botnet activity. 
quote, the researchers said they found that among tweets about reopening America, 66% came from accounts that were possibly humans using bot assistance to spread their tweets more widely, while 34% came from bots. On the Carnegie Mellon University presser, they add, quote, the research team cannot point to specific entities behind the orchestrated attempts to influence online conversations. We do know that it looks like it's a propaganda machine, and it definitely matches the Russian and Chinese playbooks, but it would take a tremendous amount of resources to substantiate that. End quote. I was looking over the released papers from the CMU study. I can't find anything that shows examples of the bot activity. The characteristics they use to determine whether it's a bot or not, include, quote, tweeting more frequently than is humanly possible or appearing to be in one country and then another a few hours later is indicative of a bot, end quote. Personally, I know a couple of coders that fit that description. What I did find interesting was the list of misinformation topics that the study collated, including drinking hot water will kill the virus, having a pneumonia shot will prevent you from getting the disease, warmer weather will kill off the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And here's a couple that if you see anyone tweet the following, you better just treat it as a bot and ignore it. Drinking cow urine and applying cow dung on the body can cure coronavirus. Kenneth Copeland can cure the virus directly from his TV studio. I don't know who that is, but I doubt the veracity of that one. You can kill the virus by holding a blow dryer up to your nose. And I recommend don't try that at home. A couple of items whose presence on the list I did find interesting were it was created in a lab and it leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China. So given that Western intelligence agencies are actually investigating this exact possibility and also that Luc Montagnier who received the 2008 Nobel Prize in Medicine for his discovery of the HIV virus has stated more than once that COVID-19 had to be modified in a lab I wonder if this really belongs on the list Silicon Valley firms do business with blacklisted China firms in October 2019, the U.S. created a blacklist including some of the largest artificial intelligence companies in China, accusing them of being complicit in human rights abuses going on in that country. That list also includes Huawei. The rationalization behind the list was that, quote, these entities have been implicated in human rights violations and abuses in the implementation of China's campaign of repression, mass arbitrary detention, and high technology surveillance against Uyghur Kazakhs and other members of Muslim minority groups, end quote. A top 10 VPN report has claimed that numerous Silicon Valley tech giants, including Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, are still providing essential services that power these companies. So CNBC reported on this. They didn't link to the top 10 VPN report, by the way. They cited them, but didn't link to it. Anyway, CNBC reached out to all three of those giants for comment and did not get any replies. Clubhouse, it's the newest tech maven and in club and you're not in it. So Jesse mentioned Clubhouse in our most recent Access of Easy salon, which we linked to in the show notes page. Uh, I decided to take a look at it. It looks like it's an ultra elite social media network that all the cool kids of Silicon Valley are scrambling to get invites for. It's a voice chat system where people can spontaneously pop into discussion rooms or just hit their contacts up and start talking. No calendar invite, it just all happens off the cuff. And, you know, I can tell you that's one thing I really don't need is another social network to just be a steady stream of non-stop interruptions but hey what do I know I'm not in the club I haven't been invited so maybe it's just sour grapes anyway Texas conducts first jury trial via video conference so Reuters reports on how jury trials are on hold throughout the USA because of coronavirus Texas is trying something new and allowing a jury in a civil case to hear testimony via zoom it's an insurance dispute in Collin County, Texas, and lawyers there already conducted jury selection via Zoom last week. Quote, more than two dozen potential jurors logged in by smartphone, laptop, and tablet for jury selection, which was streamed live on YouTube, with a judge occasionally providing tech advice on how to best use their devices, end quote. 
The trial is thought to be the first conducted this way. It's something called a summary jury trial. That's where they have a condensed version of a case in one day and then deliver a non-binding verdict. Your car may be the back door to your data. So your car is quickly becoming a potential weak spot to harvest your data because you routinely pair your smartphone with it, even temporarily with rentals. So the problem came to light in an earlier article about a security researcher who was buying used Tesla infotainment systems off eBay and finding that they were arriving with the previous owner's data still on the device. And of course, it's not confined to Teslas. It affects all cars with onboard infotainment systems that you habitually pair your phone with. So it's important, especially with rentals, to factory reset the infotainment systems before you relinquish or return the car eBay runs port scans of your computer checking for backdoors. So speaking of eBay, I saw this article on Bleeping Computer and noticed, who noticed that when they visited eBay, something on the server side there initiated a port scan of their computer. Closer inspection of the eBay website source code revealed the presence of a JavaScript file called check.js which ran a scan against 14 ports on your computer, all of which are ports commonly known to be associated with backdoors and remote access tools. And just to be clear here, this is a fraud prevention tactic. eBay doesn't want you logging into your own account from an infected computer, and it does make sense. I think I just I have this recollection that we experimented with something similar back years ago at Easy because of some really bad infection that was going around. I can't remember what it was though. It's unclear what happens if they actually find those ports open. It could mean almost anything and does not necessarily mean a compromised machine. So maybe they just throw up a warning or something. Anyway, so this week on Access of Easy, we did our fifth Access of Easy Cyber Salon with Charles Hugh Smith, Jesse Hirsch, and myself wondering, will the great opt-out be able to scale? And other interesting topics, including the structural inequality of Mad Magazine's Spy vs. Spy. So check it on out at accessofeasy.com. Help us get the word out and let your friends and colleagues know about it. Give us a rating on your favorite podcast platform like Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes. And remember the show notes for this week's page are at accessofeasy.com slash 147. And as always, stay safe and stay sane and stay healthy. Thanks. We'll see you all next week. Yeah.